Russia, a once mighty nation, a superpower in the East, a nation to be feared, a hotbed of intellect, innovation, and determination. I mean, let me remind you, they beat us to space. Well, let's answer a question, an important question. What happens to these same people when you allow corrupt thugs to take over? Well, you get a state-of-the-art electric vehicle like this, the Amber EV. What's up, motorheads, and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza. Now, if the looks weren't bad enough, well, the underpinnings, tech, and guts of this thing are most likely going to prove to be even worse. But let's focus on the obvious for now. The, well, I, I, I guess you could call it styling. So credit to the Russians here. They actually accomplished something I didn't think was possible. They were able to create a vehicle that's arguably even uglier than that brutal Fiat Multipla. And for those of you who have not seen this, I'm honestly, I'm very, very sorry for exposing you to such, well, hot garbage. Even when modified at its most dominant Toretto is just offensive to anybody who has the gift of sight. And this thing, the Amber, is actually worse by almost all accounts. All right, so let's just break this down a little bit. First thing, you see how high that floor line is? Yeah, I mean, what on earth is going on here? Well, seeing as the Russians are basically now technologically isolated from the rest of the world, it's looking like they're using lead acid batteries for this thing. You know, the same tech GM used to create that EV1 back in 1996. The GM EV1. An electric car milestone that some of you in the Southwest can actually drive home right now. Yeah, so lead acid batteries. Yep, ancient tech, heavy and just not a good solution here. So this thing won't be able to go very far and if it actually gets to where you're going, well, it's gonna take you there very slowly. All right, so moving on, you'll also notice that the entire front end of this thing from the doors to the A-pillar forward, well, it looks to be one giant piece. I mean, even the bumper is integrated, so no frunk, that much is for sure, and God forbid you get into any sort of fender bender, you're gonna be replacing that entire front end. Well, the good news here is Russia and Moscow specifically is just very well known for having all sorts of well-mannered and safe drivers. Then there's this asymmetrical porthole up front and honestly I can't really even come up with a guess to what this hole might be for. Look, okay, drop a comment with your guess, funnest guess wins a prize, maybe. And then there's another hole a bit further down which with what appears to be a cap. I mean, is this where you plug it in? Again, no real idea and it just looks kind of odd. All right, so gonna leave the headlights alone for the most part. I mean, stylistically, they're basically just a reminder that fish have no eyelids and thus can't blink. And then there's the wheels. Pretty generic, non-arrow wheels with like tiny, teeny little, tiny, tiny tires on them. And on the bright side, BMW i3 drivers will no longer have the smallest set of rubber on the road. Congrats, fellas. And no rear windows, which would sort of make the ideal place to sit. I mean, God forbid you actually seen one of these things. And there's almost certainly a back seat as there's apparently two purposes for this thing. First, as a delivery van, and second, as a ride-sharing vehicle. Yeah, seriously. All right, so uh, we had some fun, and this thing can just go away and be mostly forgotten, right? Nope, you see, this is actually slated for production in 2025 in a now idle plant in Kaliningrad. Same plant that at one point actually produced BMWs, Fords, Kias, and even Hondas. Those companies all pulled out of Russia, thankfully, and aren't coming back anytime soon, so hey, might as well put this thing to use, right? So that's basically it. What we have here, well, it's rolling proof that the sanctions, yep, seem to be working. 